So within your career, would you ever have considered yourself a punter and were you a big punter? Um, I think in my younger days I definitely was. Um, I think it's different, Julie, when you have, I think, responsibilities. Now I've got four, so I've got four sons um, who are all very good, but um, obviously I think now to be gambling too much is a bit kind of irresponsible, I think is a big word, isn't it? Um, and I think nowadays as well there's much more, whereas 20 years ago there wasn't all this kind of gamble aware and all the, all the things going on now that there are. I mean, what makes us a lot more aware, don't they, as well, of people who are spending too much time on it and obviously it's all the campaigns you see, all the all the gamble aware ads and, you know, when the fun stops, stop, all that sort of thing going on now. But I think going back to when I was probably betting my most, when I was like 19, 20 probably, going back to about 96, 97, I think I was probably betting too much. But I think I didn't have any responsibilities. I didn't have a huge living cost at the time. You had more disposable income. I think when you kind of get a bit older and you have children and you have to sort of think, mm, I'm spending too much time on it, it's probably something that's best not done. I think if you can't do it, I think gambling is the sort of thing where you need to put the time in. If you're going to be a horse racing punter, you need to, put the, you need to watch the videos. You need to put a lot of time in. Same with greyhound racing as well. I mean, obviously, when the guys were working on RPG TV, I know that whenever I worked with, well, sat with Ali, I think a few weeks ago, and he was saying how many hours he'd studied that Sheffield card for. I was thinking, wow, this guy really does put a lot of work in. So I think if you're going to be a, a successful punter, you need to put the time in. And uh, yeah, I haven't really got that much time to do it. So I've decided to just sort of opt out. I'll have the odd bet now and again. Um, obviously, Cheltenham, I'm a little girl at that. I like about the golf sometimes, occasionally. But I think in terms of the everyday, kind of every race meeting, sort of, I think I had to sort of knock that on the head a few years ago. What's been your biggest or most successful bet you've had? Um, I think I had a far too big a bet on Phil Mickelson when he won the Masters back in about 2004, 2005. Um, it was kind of an all-in kind of crazy bet. I think it was about 12 to 1 at the start. I was convinced he was going to win it. And it was back in the day when you didn't really sort of do things like lay off and it wasn't all these sort of cash-out options. It was just a cash bet in a betting shop. So there wasn't all this kind of cash-out cover bet. I just had to stand it and... Luckily, he won. I remember he beat Ernie Els. Ernie Els um, was in front, I think, with three to play, and Mickelson birdied the last two, hold an amazing part of the last to win it, and it was just it was just euphoria. Um, I think I backed him. At, started backing him at fourteen, so I had a big bet of twelve. I was backed him again at sevens, and again after the first round at like eights as well. So it was kind of a bit of a crazy bet, but it won me a lot of money, and it was very good. Really? And I was just buying a flat at the same time, so it kind of helped. I could definitely see why people get a thrill out of that kind of bet. <laughs> what, what do you look for in a bet? And do you feel like because of your job, you get any sort of edge or inside information? Um, I think obviously when I've often I've owned greyhounds. I think greyhound racing is, is. I think betting is such a big part of greyhound racing. I think it always is going to be. Um, a big part of it and horse racing as well is the same sort of thing I think horse racing and betting do go hand in hand I mean you look at people who go to the horse racing how many people go to a horse race, race meeting and not have a bet you could probably count them on one hand to be honest um, most people are there to try and win some money try and have a bit of fun but I think as long as you keep it fun and don't start spending money that you can't afford to lose then it's okay um, but in terms of an edge never, I mean you get pe people say oh they fancy this they, you do hear, th hear stuff I work with a lot of people in horse racing, people say, oh, he fancies this, this trainer, this has been working well. But, I mean, it's not always, it's not 100% proof. You've, you've had loads of good tips, loads of bad ones. So you kind of get to know, though, who the good sources are and who aren't after after a few years. And you mentioned you've got four sons now. We can see a photo of your, your youngest, Sam, behind us. So you have a, a busy life in and out of work, don't you? Yeah, it's it's pretty hectic. I mean, I, I did 13 days uh, work and then um, I was off. I had three days off. My mum said, I'll have a nice rest. And so I said, no rest. Like, Sam will be up at seven. Got to look after him and stuff. Because obviously Nicola works a lot as well, which is, I mean, she's very, she's got, she's got a very good job. So um, she needs me to do my sort of share with Sam, which I'm happy to do. But yeah, it's, it's pretty full on. But do you find the hours and the travelling difficult? Um, I used to find them more the Milton Keynes throughout the races was hard because obviously where we are, I mean, Croydon in Surrey, I mean, it was a, it was a fair old hike up to Milton Keynes. But based now in Isleworth, it's a lot easier journey for me, either by car or train, it's a lot easier. Um, commentating wise, I still do a few, you still have to do your share of like long distance commentaries. You can't just say, I can't just ring up race tickets, so I'll just put me on link fields for the whole year that I would like to because that would be handy. But you, you've got to go and do your Wolverhamptons, you've got to go and do your Musselboroughs, you've got to go and do your Fosslass and your Chepstows. So, I mean, that's part of the job. But I mean, but that's the great thing about racing. Every track is so different about commentating. I think that's, that's where you get your skill set from as well, by doing the different tracks. So I just did Lingfield every week. I think don't think I'd be very good at commentating. I think I need to go elsewhere to learn about different tracks and, and how 
racetracks sort of how the how the action sort of unfolds at different tracks. But I mean, traveling is okay. I mean, I was lucky enough. I did a couple of days at Chepstow the other week, which was good. Obviously, get a, a night off as well, which was quite helpful. Um, but no, it's it's the traveling is probably the worst thing there still. I mean, driving as you know yourself. I mean, these days roads are overcrowded, especially when you go to the wrong track. Yeah, that wasn't good, was it? We weren't going to mention that. You said about that Doncaster mistake. Well, obviously, we did work <laughs> together for many years on Sky Greyhounds, and you basically had the most high-profile job that there is in greyhound racing, fronting the, the Sky Sports shows. How big a loss do you think? the sky coverage is to greyhound racing yeah it's still a loss i still miss it i still speak to i mean lee irvine you know we used to produce all the shows and he still talks about it how it's it's a bit of a void isn't it that we i think we've struggled to fill to be honest um i remember getting the job i, I remember getting the call i asked to be on the team i just thought oh, i could do the odd day maybe cover a commentary for holidays and stuff and then lee irvine to know we want you to be the main presenter and be alongside hobsey as the, the main two and i was like wow this is a really big chance and we, i think we had four years of it didn't we of doing it i, I loved it i think i I didn't miss a show on the last year. I remember doing that the whole year. It was brilliant. Um, and obviously people saying, oh, yeah, you know, Jeff Stelling was the person before you and that sort of stuff. It's like, wow, this is exciting. And Gary Newbon, of course. Yeah, Gary legends. Newbon. And, yeah, I might be on Countdown next and things, but <laughs> it hasn't quite happened yet. But yeah, obviously took over from Gary Newbon, Jeff Stelling before him. Um, so some, some very high-profile presenters. And obviously Gary and, and Jeff are probably two of the best sports presenters in the last decade, I think it'd be fair to say, wouldn't it? So. Mm. It was big shoes to fill, but I think I did it. I think I did well. I remember my first few meetings was my knowledge wasn't quite that's quite there. I remember Hobbs had to sort of take, take me one side and said, you know, where are you getting this from about this greyhound? And you've got the wrong trainer here. You've got the wrong. And it's like, oh, but you know, Hobbs was a good help to be fair to him. And he put me right in a few things. And then I think I made more notes and I was more ready for like the meetings after that. But as a loss, it's it's a massive loss, isn't it? I think now that greyhound racing doesn't have that reach, Julie, anymore, does it? Whereas before, I think everyone knew when big tournaments were going to be, even not even the, just the derby. People knew when the select stakes were going to be. People knew when the Steel City Cup was because it was part of the Sky calendar. And I think now without that, I mean, it's brilliant. I mean, RPG TV do a fantastic job. And I know that Clive and Dave and, and all the JK and all the team there, they've got a lot, put a lot into it. And the sponsorship is great as well. Look how much money that RPG TV are putting into the sponsorship now. I mean, the, to have a £10,000 Steel City Cup final the other night was fantastic as well. Um, but I just think, RPG TV is, has good viewers, but it's kind of it's only people in the game a lot who watch it. I think to get that, how are we going to get it sort of to people who don't watch that channel? I mean, I think Sky did that, didn't it? It brought people in. You'd go to the races during when the derby was on. People would be talking about the derby and say, "I can't wait for Tuesday night I'm watching the next round." And whereas I just don't think it has that reach now without the terrestrial or the, or the Sky mainstream coverage, which is sad. What do you think was a bigger loss, Sky Sports coverage or Toaster? Oh, big question. Uh, personally, Sky Sports coverage, but um, I think the Sky coverage was the big loss. But Toaster, again, was a massive hit, wasn't it? I think nobody really saw it coming either. That was the thing, wasn't it? We were kind of all looking forward to carrying on. I mean, they, had, they just had that deal without the races. With the Saturday mornings without the races, they were quite successful as well. I mean, it was the eight dog races were, were, were a bit, bit of a big hit. Um, and obviously that going, and just when they spent so much money on the track, I mean, they had the surface just right. They'd done the bends. It was just getting rave reviews, wasn't it, in terms of safety? The sectional timings, all the equipment was there. The, the sort of the start camera coverage, the and the experience of when you went to Toaster was uh, to watch the racing as well. All the big screens and just how it was covered. The lighting was brilliant. I've never seen such a, a track so well lit for night racing than, than Toaster was. But um, obviously that was a huge blow as well. And it's just just driving past it as well the other day and just thinking there's that track just lying there, just you know, perfect track, perfect horse racing track as well. Just absolutely, what a waste. Do you think? You've even talked about the, the days back at Wembley and the crowds and everything, and it does seem to be a, a sport in decline as much as we would not want it to be. Do you think there is any way back for greyhound racing? I don't know. You, just, you do get the feeling it's kind of heading towards... Is it heading towards ending? I hope not. I hope it can continue, but I'm not sure how much longev longevity there is in it because there are obviously problems with funding. I know at the moment... Um, Prize money is still not great. I mean, for example, we have a obviously a share in Morning Live Lane. He won a, I think he won a B1 down at Hove. It, it didn't even cover his his training cost for the month. I mean, that's nothing against how much it costs to train a dog because I don't understand how much that is. But I think the prize money is still to be winning 150 quid for like top grade races. I think the sports, uh, it's, it's a bit behind, isn't it, in terms of things like that. Um, I think to have a sport without a proper statutory levy system as well is a huge minus. I mean... Look at horse racing, it's got a proper levy system there. I think bookmakers have been getting away for a number of years and not paying enough money back into the sport and just raking off the profits. I think that's still happening a lot now. Um, I know they've got this new, is it less than 1%? There is a payment that, that go through now, isn't it? It was set up for a few months ago. 
but still it's not enough um when you look at the tracks you look at the prize money you look at how much owners have to pay for greyhounds and just think of this there's greyhounds that probably cost over five thousand pounds and they're running around tracks for 120 150 pounds and you think that's probably not right um so i think prize money is still too low and also i mean welfare is massive as well isn't it and, and i know a lot of the money that the, the new money coming in um from from the bookmaker payments is going towards welfare which is very important but there's also the owners and trainers to think about as well and i think obviously you know you've got kennel hands probably not earning enough money that they should do doing long hours for example I think a lot still needs to be looked at in greyhound racing if it's going to continue. If we're comparing greyhounds and horses, I think whilst greyhound racing has declined in popularity, horse racing generally, I would say, is on the up. Would you agree? Yeah, it seems to be the big days are well attended. There's still there's still a lot of you go to quiet meetings. There's not many people there, but um, I mean the, the big Saturdays are well attended. I mean horse racing has its problems too. I mean well documented recently that obviously the the BHA the welfare case with Declan Lavery the ban he got at Cheltenham for his ride on Jerry's back was a big negative I think to where the sport was run. Obviously, we've had the, the recent boycotts. Uh, we've had the fighting at racetracks, which has been a, a big story as well, which is obviously puts the sport in a bad light. So, you know, you know let's, horse racing isn't without its problems, but I do think that in the BHA, they've got a very good regulatory board, which is very important. I think the BHA do take action on things. I know people think sometimes recently in the Declan Lavery case, they haven't done the right action, but I think the BHA are there. They're on top of things. They're with it. They're dialed in. Um, to things going on in the sport and in terms of keeping the sport clean I think they're very good integrity matters I think they're bang on it um, obviously the GBGB do a great job in policing the sport as well in greyhound racing but I think there's a lack of maybe promotion still about greyhound racing for example when we had the um, the recent the uh, the equine flu didn't we in horse racing with no horse racing for a week I think it was, what a chance that was for greyhound racing to go and say right let's try and get ourselves back on the tele back televised Let's put an afternoon meeting on when there's no horse racing on in this country. Ten races from Hove or somewhere and try and get that onto some sort of mainstream platform. And we'd have had huge interest in it, but obviously there, was, there doesn't seem to be anybody within Greyhound Racing doing that sort of job, like pushing it forward. Uh, I think that's a shame. Across both sports now, we have this strong competition between ARC and SIS. Do you think it's good for the game in any way or detrimental? Um, Horse racing, I think it's 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 going all right. Obviously, there's, there's there's lots in the news at the moment about the payments with the betting shops closing, but all due to the FOBT change. Um, I think horse racing, I think horse racing shouldn't be reliant first of all on on machines in betting shops and how that's happened. I don't know, but obviously that's how it's it's happened with the media rights. Um, I understand how it's happened, um, but in terms of the greyhound racing. I think it's unsustainable the amount of greyhound racing at the moment. I mean, the other day I just had a little look on the on the racing post app, see how many races were going off, and you got a race going off at eleven oh one, one at eleven oh three, I think, and there was like eleven, and it was just so so many races going off, and it's like, is there enough demand for this? Is it sustainable? And a lot of sprint races as well. I couldn't believe how many sprints there were on on the card. I understand why they're easier to fill than than like four bend or six bend races, but um, I don't know. I think obviously they, I can see why. SIS want to put on their product and obviously ARC via TRP have put on their own product as well. So um, it's just a lot of racing. It's a lot of greyhounds to find, isn't it? It's a lot of races to fill. And I think probably something we'll have to give eventually. Do you see any point where there might be a truce? And I'd hope so. You'd, you'd like to think that, that both sides, I mean, I know people on both sides. And I, I can't see why they can't sort of get around a table and sort this out. But it, it appears it may have... The longer it goes on without a truce, the, the longer you think it's going to keep going, the the, um, the, the dispute, if you like, or the, or the double service almost of, of greyhound racing. Um, I would like to see a truce, I but I don't think it's going to happen at the moment. Um, and obviously the greyhound calendar has been affected as well by things, haven't it? Obviously we have tournaments or competitions, I should say, in different times of the year. It's like we still City Cup in March. I still couldn't get used to that. Um, and just things have been moved around a lot, haven't they, as a result of this. But I can understand why they want to get more events on a Saturday night for the crowds. Um, but I just think a lot of it has been lost a bit without the Sky coverage in terms of people knew when everything was throughout the year, whereas now it's kind of all a bit more, a bit more difficult to follow.